into your greatness, march it into your greatness. You can be seated, because I'm going to take you on a journey. If you can be seated, I'm going to take you on a journey. You can turn your Bible to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. You can wait on me right there. 1 Samuel, chapter 17. We begin with verse number 45. Before I get you there, let me bring you up to speed to make sure you're in the right frame of mind to receive the word of God so you will leave here not entertained but empowered. Yes, yes, this yes. series we've been dealing with in the March of March is called Marching Into Your Greatness. And before that sounds like an arrogant or conceited statement, no, we're just identifying with our place with God. Yes. Because when God created us, he called us great. And we're going to take back everything the devil has tried to steal from us, including our self-identity. We were created to be great. And we're going to march back into our greatness. But we discovered throughout this series, we discovered in order to march into your greatness, it takes great faith. It takes great faith to take your family back. It takes great faith to reclaim and restore, rebuild and renew everything the devil has messed with. So now, now you the duck reasoning if it takes great faith to march into greatness that means the devil the enemy lucifer satan is going to attack our area of faith because if he attacks our area of faith he will keep us stuck in a losing negative position and the reality of it is somebody came to church this morning spiritually emotionally mentally in a losing position you're smiling but you really want to cry you, 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 you have a look on your face like you're happy but on the inside you're torn up from the floor up because the devil has distorted your reality he has made you feel like there's no way out he's made you feel like you're stuck and you're losing you and your mama and your daddy and your children and your children's children the devil has made you feel like there's no win nor victory for you but we come to fight back the devil this morning we come to reclaim and restore we come to put a demand on the atmosphere we're getting ready to march into our greatness we're getting ready to take back everything Paul, the senior minister, puts it like this to young Timothy, the young preacher. Paul says in 1 Timothy 6 and 12, take notes, write it down before we get to our main text. Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 6 and 12, fight the good fight of faith. Uh, you missed that this morning. Fight the good fight of faith. Because there are some things worth fighting for. Fight the good fight of faith. Dr. King says to you, found something you wouldn't fight for, even fight the death. You haven't found a reason strong enough to live. And today I'm telling you, your children and your children's children, your community is worth fighting for. Stop rolling over and playing dead to the tricks of the enemy. Your seed is worth fighting for. Your greatness is worth fighting for. Amen. The enemy has declared too long. And we get so spiritual, especially African Americans Come on now. who came home on the bottom of slave ships. We get so spiritual during hard times. We start labeling our struggle as generational curse like we have no control of it. I'm under a generational curse. I'm stuck here. And for too long, the devil has had you declaring you're under a generational curse. But I'm challenging you this morning to reset your thoughts. For the man thinking so is he. Amen. I'm challenging this boy to declare I'm ready to march into my greatness. Do me a favor, if you will, and repeat after me like we back in grade school and we'll learn our ABCs for the first time. Repeat after me. I'm ready. To march into my greatness. You and your children and your children's children are blessed going in 
and blessed coming out. But you must make a decision today. Your family tree is loaded with greatness, not craziness, not laziness, not brokenness. But your family tree is loaded with greatness. Reclaim your family. Stop walking around saying this is the way we are. It's a lie from the pits of hell. You are not created to be broke. You are not created to be mad and sad. You are not created to be at the bottom. You were created in the image of God to rise up and have dominion, have power, have authority. You were created to tell the devil and all his workers, get thee behind me. Now stand up in your boldness. Stand up in your birthright. You were created to be great. Come on, man. Don't care with the Cashmere, Wheatley, Yates, Smiley, Forest Brook, North Shore. Don't care with the school in Spring, HISD, Aldi. You were created to be great, not based on your zip code, not based on your gender, not based on your race, not based on your last name. You were created to be great because you were created in the image of God. And he said, you look like me, you sound like me, and I don't know about you, but I know God is great. So if God created me to be like him, Jesse, I got to be great. And the generation after me got to see a black man and a black woman standing in greatness so they'll know they too can be. I think you get it. I think you get it. To get to your place of greatness, you have to have the faith to fight the giants in your pathway. Because the more you decree and declare, Yes, the bigger they gonna look, and the more they gonna show up. Yes. See, if you're doing nothing, it's not gonna frustrate you. The devil is not gonna bother you if you make your mind up. I'm gonna be broke all the days of my life. I'm under generational curse. I'm gonna be sad and sick and mad and frustrated. If you make your mind up, I'm just an angry black man. If you make your mind up, I'm just somebody's baby mama. Ain't no more to me. If you make your mind up, that's the end of your story. You ain't got to worry about no devil messing with you. You're your own worst enemy. But for those of us who are standing bold in faith declaring the best is still yet to come. I don't care if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. The best is still yet to come. The devil is going to assign some giants in your pathway to frustrate you, irritate you, and mess with you. But today, we will at least enough faith to defeat and destroy every giant in my pathway. Try to contain myself. But I know how the story ends. For, the, for those who, 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 who want to stand with the reading of the word, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45, you can now stand for the reading of God's word. Stay, stay off that, stay off, stay off, stay off that. that you know, that's, that's, that's my spiritual crack. If you get on that, I'm going to go crazy. Stay off that. Let me finish my assignment. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 45. We'll, we'll, we'll run down to verse 50. David said to the Philistine, that's the giant, you come against me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. Into my hands. And I'll strike you down and cut off your head. You gotta attack the bully at the head. Uh, cut down your head. This very day I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know there is a God in Israel. There's a God in Greens Point. There's a God in Third Ward. There's a God in Fieldport. There's a God in Sunnyside. There's, there's a God up and down Homestead. There's a God on Lockwood. There's a God. Okay, what they're saying, okay, what those woke folks saying, there was a God that woke me up. It's, that, that is, that is a God. All those gathered here would know that not by the sword or spear the Lord saves, but the battle is the Lord's. And he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine giant moved closer, attacked him. David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him, reaching to his bag, taking out a stone. He swung it and struck down the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell down to the ground. David trumpeted over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. 
Thank you, Caesar. Let's have a conversation. Fighting the good fight of faith. Fighting the good fight of faith. After years of bullying the people of God. Bullying the people of God. Many of us have been bullied by the enemy. Come on, yeah, come on. Called fear. Called racism. Called segregation. Sexism. Many of her sisters uh, were, were smarter than, but she stayed at the bottom because some sister put in place called a glass ceiling and wouldn't let her rise to the top. But thank God those days are over and women are being empowered across this country to rise up and stand up. There was a time you were judged based on the color of your skin, but now you can win no matter what skin you're in. The bully, the bully has now been bullied back. So after years of bullying the people of God, Goliath the giant is now defeated by David the underdog. And I like the fact that God allows the underdog to win. So you and I, no matter what orientation we come out of, no matter what our background is, no matter what our story is, God is using David as the underdog to show you and I, we too can win. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. Because if David won, I can win. If David can rise up and take out the giant, then I can rise up and take out the giant. And you can rise up and take out the giant. Give God some praise right there. The underdog wins. And see, I want to start at that point of victory. Uh -huh. That's a weird place to start at. Usually you start at the beginning at the bad stuff and you walk your way through the good for a climatic conclusion. But I want to start at the victory. Oh, and the reason I want to start the victory is because we're going to get ready to go on a journey. A journey of faith. Yeah. And the Bible is clear about this. We will face trouble. Yeah. We will face giants. Yeah. Hardships. Yeah. Persecution. There's some folks you rolled with back in high school that have lied about you since high school. That, that was somebody you thought, I mean, maybe it was your prom day. You thought this big girl gonna be with me for the, all the days of my life. You only found out he was young and restless. But you fried your last tea over him. You got over her. That's called life. But many quit. Before they get the victory. Because they did not have the faith to endure. Come on, come on. Many quit before God's promise of victory arrives. Because you do know there's a point in time of victory. And if you quit before you appoint a time of victory, you would never experience victory. It's like going to the airport and your ticket says the plane will take off at 10.30 and you get there at 9.30 and you get mad because the plane not leaving and you go back home. Well, you miss your flight. And that's how many have done in faith. Yes, you've been waiting for a long time, but your appointed time has not arrived yet. Just stay in faith and watch God show out. See, the longer God has you waiting, that means God has more in store for you. See, when a plane is getting ready to go a long distance, it don't just take right off. The longer the journey, the longer the route on the runway means we get ready to go somewhere high. We get ready to go real high and real far. So maybe you've been on the runway for a little while longer than somebody else. They were just going off for Dallas. You get ready to go to Paris and France. You get ready to go to the other side of the world. It may take a little longer to get there, but stay in faith. God has a destination of greatness with your name on it. Because God promised me and you, he would never leave us nor forsake us. And if we stay with him in faith, we will win in the end. Because there's only three real options. You, you stay in faith and you win. You get out of faith and you lose or you quit. Eliminate quitting. So now you got win or losing. Stay in faith to win. Yes, you can win. Yeah. Will it be easy? No. Is it possible? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let's walk through this. Let's walk through this. We see David now has the victory, so you know how the story ends. You know he wins. So no matter how dark or gloomy it gets, guess what? David wins. He you take your spirit. No matter how dark or gloomy it gets, David wins. And the reason I want to put that in your appetite first, because some of you are in a dark, gloomy place, but you need to know you win. Just hang in there, you win. Tell your neighbor, just hang in there, you win. No matter what it looks like this season, it's not over, you win. First Samuel chapter 16, look at verse number 7. First Samuel chapter 16, look at verse number 7, and let's walk our way back up to the victory parade. 
But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outer appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. See what was going on here. They were getting ready to anoint the king. And, and his brother Jesse had seven sons. He brought them all before to be anointed the next king. And boy after boy went before the prophets. They know not him, no not him. But Jesse had another son named David. He did not even invite inside to be considered to be great. Uh, you missed that. His own father did not consider him worthy to even be considered to be great. Oh, you, you, you missing the point. You missing the point. See, 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 David was not even invited inside to be under consideration to be great. So somebody feel what I'm saying right here. But the Bible is clear. God, thank God that he does not look at us like people look at us. People are so judgmental. People, people are so critical of us. But thank God that God does not look at us the way others look at us. The Bible says Jesse had seven sons passed by Samuel the prophet. But Samuel said to him, the Lord is not true. Them. Mm -hmm. That was some folks you voted most likely. And now they work for you. <laughs> Hang in faith and watch God work it out for you. So, so he said to Jesse, Are oh, these all the sons you have? Is that a prophet? Not for people? He said, I know the Lord told me the king was in his house. I've looked at all your boys, and the Lord said, No, 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 no. So, so, so what's up? And just say, oh, you know what? I forgot. I got another boy, but he, you know, he, he surely can't be the king. She surely can't. She, she got three baby dads. She surely can't be. He, he's been in trouble. He's been on that stuff. He surely can't be. Come on, man. I mean, you like, how many times she been divorced? And the man she with now, she living it, they didn't even marry? You, you gonna consider her? Uh -huh. The Bible says, the Bible says, that, that the prophet says, sin for him. <laughs> when others reject you, God says, sin for him, sin for him. How would somebody get excited here? Others have rejected you, but God says, sin for him. And look what happens, look what happens. Uh, I'm trying not to explode. I'm trying not to take off no running. But look what happens. So he sent for him and had him brought in. I'm uh, down um, verse 12. Now I'm just reading the Bible. I'm just sharing a Bible story. Uh, in verse 12, he sent for him. He went and brought him in. He was glowing. He was glowing. He was glowing. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the all and appointed him and anointed him in the presence. Watch this now. In the presence of his brothers. From that day, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. The Bible says, rise and anoint him. He, let me paraphrase, he and she is the one. Because it's not gender-based. Sister, you, you too can be chosen as the one. Don't, 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 don't let no insecure man tell you you can't be the one. And any man is trying to hold you down, not worthy of your crown. Come on! You're more than hips and thighs. Your intellect. Your brilliance. You're wonderfully made. Now rise up and be anointed. All is getting ready to The Bible says, rise up and anoint him. He is the one. He was anointed. Get this. He was anointed in the presence of his brothers and his father who discredited him. Those who, who thought you'd never be in me, God is getting ready to rise you up in the midst of them. Those family members who talk you down, devalue you. God is getting ready to rise you up in their presence. Your enemies are about to become your footstool, your elevation to your next level of success. Everybody who walked out on you, talked about you, put you down. Everybody who buried you for dead, God says in their presence, I'm getting ready to anoint you in their presence for all. It's getting ready to flow on you. I'm getting ready to use the other goal this season. The most likely won't be the one this season. It will be the least likely. That God will use the greatest. If that sounds like you, I will yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We need two quick points on this. Yes, Lord. One, overlooked by others. But, you know what you learn in English class, but counts as a sentence. 
But rearranged is the assignment of the sentence overlooked by others, but chosen by God. Overlooked by others, but chosen by God. If that sounds like you, I dare you take three seconds and give God some crazy praise. They overlook you, but God chose. But chosen by God. Hold on, put the seatbelt so undervalued, undervalued by your own family, but valuable in the eyes of God. Woo! Undervalued by your own family, but valuable in the eyes of God. Now if that's your story, won't you give God some praise? Your family undervalued you, but you're valuable in the eyesight of God. God says, he is the one, she is the one. I chose her, I chose him, undervalue. Yes. yes, yes, you are the one. I'm talking to you, yes, you are the one. I'm talking to you, yes, you are Hit your neighbor, he's talking to you. You are the one. And you are the, you are the one. See, God knows all. God knows all. And he chose you. Oh, you, don't, you don't know when to shout. God knows all. Your yesterday, your today, and your tomorrow. God knows all. Yes, he chose you. Jesus, Jesus even said, your family will be the ones most likely to overlook your greatness. But until you have enough faith to overcome them, you'll be limited in your area of greatness. So, so, so God gave your first test at home. Uh, let me show you how to walk in faith. Look at verse 13. I'm just walking through the text. Look at verse 13. The all flows on David. The all flows on David. The all of greatness is ready to flow in this place like a rushing river. The all flows on David. And the all that's the wanted of God, that's the empowerment of God, that's the, the favor and mercy and grace of God is getting ready to flow in this place because God is ready to take you to a higher place. Yeah. Let us walk through this. The all is ready to flow on the ones on the outside. David was on the outside, but the all flowed on David. What are you saying, preacher? There's some people you have discounted and thrown away. You pushed them on the outside, and God says, this season, this season of change, this generation will not be led by the ones you hope will most likely. This generation, God says, those on the outside, those you thought would never be anything, don't you do away. God says, the heart is getting ready to flow. The heart is getting ready to flow on those on the outside. Y'all gonna flow on, on the folks that's tatted up. Y'all gonna flow on the folks that's messed up. Y'all gonna flow on the folks that everybody gave up on with. God says, this season, I gotta use a broken vessel so everybody will know the power of God. Y'all is getting ready to flow on the walls on the outside. Y'all is getting ready to flow on some single mother struggling with your children on the outside. Nobody wanna deal with you because all your issues, all your trauma, all your situations. But God wanna be reminding you this morning, the all is getting ready to flow on you. The all is getting ready to flow on your single mother. The all is getting ready to flow on your struggling mother. The all is getting ready to flow. And I know it ain't just about you. The all is getting ready to flow on you. But it's the key right here. And your children who've been on the outside, your son has been locked up. Your father has been messed up. Your children that everybody talks about at the family reunion that have never been a thing. Look at that old fast down over there. How many babies she gonna have? When he going back to jail, he just to go back to jail. Look at he'll never be anything. thing. Like there's no good daddy or single mother. I come to make a major announcement this morning. The all of God is getting ready to flow out. 
watching, watching other folks flow in their purpose, in their greatness. You've been watching, but when my turn, but when my turn, you've been watching and waiting. But I come to give a major declaration. Now is your time to march into your greatness. You've been cheering for others. You've been praying for others. You've been watching others. But now it's your time. I dare you to give God some praise. Now it's your time. You passed the test. I say you passed the test. You didn't quit. You didn't throw in the towel. You didn't lose your mind. And the lost you got it back. Now is the time. Keep reading. We get ready to run to a close. But I had to talk about verse 28 and 29. David got to the battlefield to take lunch to his brothers, his older brothers. They were at the battlefield. But I'm curious about something. They went to the battlefield every day and never threw a blow. They were so intimidated by the giant, they showed up and stayed silent. And the giant kept hot capping, throwing shade. And they stood there. Like there's nothing we can do. Look at verse 28. When Elab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the man, he was saying, man, now, now, why are we not fighting this giant? Why are we not doing something? David's older brother heard him talking. He burned with anger at him and asked him, why did you come down here? And with whom did you leave? Watch this, those few sheep, dry shade. Like his life was not significant. Come on, man. You, you just a receptionist? You just a teacher? What you mean? You, you just a home, home mom? That's all you do is preach. Few sheep in the wilderness. I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. David yeah. says, what have I done? Uh -huh. What have I done? Yeah. Watch this. Yes. Yeah. Our final test uh -huh. before we march into greatness. The next battle we must fight is that God said versus they said. Come on. Oh, that's it. That's it. Can I, can you overcome the they said and walk into the God said? What God says builds up our faith. What God says causes us to reflect on what God's already done in our lives. David says, when the bear came to kill me, God gave me the victory. David says, when a lion came to attack me, God gave me the victory. See, our faith and our God gives us the victory. What they say is an attempt. So say an attempt. To prevent us. To prevent you from doing and being who God said you were. But I have a question. I have a question right here before we close. Why would you allow somebody that's not winning to tell you about winning. Say that again. How you going to tell me about something? You ain't even doing it. Take your own advice. How? How? How can you tell me about my marriage when your marriage is jacked up? Come on. Take your own advice. How can you give me financial advice and, 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 and you... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How, how, how can you tell me how to go forward? You stuck in place. Stop taking advice. Stop letting folks who not winning stop you from believing you can win. Yeah. See, see, God said, God said, we. So I say we. we. 
are more than conquerors. God said we can do all things through Jesus. God said we can produce much. God said we're created in his image. And I don't know about you, but I believe what God said. That brings me, that brings me back to where we started from. A battle. This is good, man. On the go. Uh, and a giant. Yeah. Vegas has it all stacked high. The giant will win in the first round. That David don't have a chance against that giant. The giant is talking trash. All the other men who've been trained to fight are afraid to go to battle. David, who's never been trained to fight, shows up to the giant, said, you come against me with sword, javelin, and dagger. That means the things of this world. But I come against you in the name, in the name, in the name, in the name. In the name. Yeah. 